Hello! Sorry I'm a little bit late. I'm Danielle from Under the Rowan Trees. We had a, a slight technical password related hitch, but I'm here. Uh, I am not Jo. I'm not Oopsie Daisy. I am Danielle. Hello! Um, and I'm here in the Rowan Room, the new home of Under the Rowan Trees. Uh, jo thought, and I'm so chuffed that she asked me, that you might like to see some of my uh, stock of stationery and ask me some questions. Um, oh no, don't worry Daisy, Daisy, Joe, whoever you are today. <laughs> We're here eventually. Um, so I've had a few questions already as part of this, um, the build up, but feel free to ask questions now. I should be able to read them. Oh, hello mum. A bit like Joe's mum popped in earlier. My mum's here too. It's Auntie Alice, who's my mum. Um, and she's not been able to see my own room yet. It was finished just as lockdown started. So she's only seen it via... Uh, video chats wandering around as well so i can't wait till they can come and see and come visit um so i started under the rowan trees uh, six years ago in a totally different format to what it is now i used to be a teacher and um i left teaching nearly four years ago now and this became my full-time job um hi and this has just totally transformed my life Um one of the comments that i got on my stories when i asked for questions was just you know, um, you've got my dream job and I am living absolutely my dream, but I've been so busy the last few weeks, which I've got all you guys to thank for that. So that's been absolutely amazing. Um, I met Jo at the stationery show in London. Uh, we'd met online. She'd made stencils for my subscription box, uh, but we'd not met face to face. And then we were literally standing next to each other and discovered we knew each other, which was fantastic. And it was great to make a friend who's in the same world working from home and uh, in the stationery bubble like me. So I'm going to talk to you about some of the products I sell. Um, I'm happy to talk to you about products I don't sell if I know about them. So pop your questions in there. I specialise in stationery for journaling and lettering, but I also have lots of you know general stationery for whatever you may want to use it for. Um, from highlighters, notebooks, um, inks, all sorts of things. Uh, there's lots going on here at the moment, lots of big changes. Um, I've just got a new logo designed and all new branding and the new website is hopefully coming on the 1st of July. So uh, everything that you see now is going to be there but there's just going to be more of it with the new look. And my subscription box, which is currently a stationary box, very unimaginative and has been for three years, is going to become the Rowanberry box. Um, which I'm really excited about. I've ordered uh, all the new branded boxes and things like that. Hello Sarah, hello stationary magpie. This morning when I went live in my Facebook group I completely forgot the word magpie. I live in Newcastle, it's unforgivable. We usually have at least two in the garden so I do apologise. But yes, this is my pen wall um, and I, it's as you can see it's rather full. Um, I think I might need to uh, <laughs> take over a few more walls but I've got um, no, uh, bookcases full of notebooks over there and I've got a big standing desk where I pack here um, so it's, it is a proper stationary heaven but it's a bit warm so I apologise if I get a bit pink um, and uh, you may hear lawn mowers or uh, dogs barking neither of which are mine or a small boy may appear who definitely is mine so I apologise in advance he's been told to stay out the way <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm now, I've moved from the house not very far to the top of the garden. So that's why I've been so lucky that I've been able to work right through lockdown. Oh, thank you. These are my uh, little pig, little pig designs, jewellery, pencil earrings. I've also got a rainbow pencil necklace from her that I wear quite often. Um, but I wasn't sure I went with this dress. Um, so let's talk about stationery. It's not much else to talk about really, is there? Um, so I've picked out some things that I thought you might be interested in. Most of the questions I've had so far have been pen related and I thought I'd also answer some of the questions that I get regularly when people are um, getting in touch and wanting to start out and are not sure where to, you know, where to begin. Um, so I'll start with more sort of journaling pens and then we'll talk a bit about pens to use for calligraphy with ink, that sort of thing. Wow, 26 of you. It'd be great to see you all in person, but I suppose you wouldn't all fit. It would definitely be too hot. So this is the, the best alternative. So um, I was asked really my favourite pens for uh, for drawing, for writing, for journaling um, and it has to be the Secura Pigma Microns, sorry the bat front. Um, I've got them individually, most of the sizes, but they come in loads of sizes and loads of colours in some of the sizes and different tips. So this set, which is fantastic, 
uh, has from the 005 up to the 08 so it's got 01, 02, 03, 05, 08 it's got a brush pen and it's got a PN what a PN is, I don't know if you can see on there, they've got little metal nibs, really fine metal nibs from the finest right through to the chunky ones. Um, but the PN actually has a plastic nib. Where's mine? It's a purple one, of course. I don't know if you can see. Oh, it's a bit blurry. Can't we can make that out. So you can be a lot more rough with it, but this it but it is a an 0405 thickness which is blah, 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 about four millimetres, depending on how hard you press. But I love that just for everyday writing. The more I've used it, the chunkier it has got from sort of pressing hard. But I really like how my handwriting looks in one of those. And my husband, who's a teacher and very fussy when it comes to pens, uh, but also doesn't see why he needs to pay more for pens than 20p or whatever. Uh, he's got one of these and he loves it. Um, uh, but they don't come in green is the challenge so for the teachers who mark in green I had to get him a regular one put my hand behind the nib see that's why they need the experts that working mm. gives you an idea anyway sorry Sarah um so that is the difference I'll show you the one the metal nibs in fact I've used this one so much that the numbers rubbed off the end but they so that's what the metal nibs look like to get the distance right so they can if you're too rough with them get a bit squished um freebie one in brown oh dear yeah no my purple actually was my freebie from the stationery show and it's still going so it's lasted me over a year but as you see i do switch out between a lot of them but the sepia is quite popular um uh, i don't know if it's a particular sort of look within people's journals they like the sepia but yeah it sells quite well um, so they are my favourite for drawing lines and for writing and because you've got such a variation in sizes you know you can do nice thick bold lines or you can do really tiny ones so I think uh, um, a mix pack is a great way to start and then you can find the thickness that suits you and then buy more individually of those um, and I try and have a mix of things as packs and things individually so if there's just a particular one that you you know you particularly like a certain size you can buy that individually but there are so many colors and sizes that i do struggle a bit to stock them all but if there's something you particularly want let me know you know i want to stock what people want to buy so yes i'm sad about the stationery show too it was fantastic last year so for anyone who doesn't know it's the biggest trade event in the uk so all the stationers go set out their stands and you get to go around and chat to them uh, and get freebies uh, but we get to meet some fantastic people so I met some really lovely reps who I now see quite regularly. Uh, I had a lovely chat with the lady on the phone from Leuchten. I can't say it. The other day. Uh, and my secret that I haven't told anybody is it looks like I'm going to be stocking uh, Leuchten's notebooks very soon. The original bullet journals. And that was my first ever bullet journal. So uh, I think they're going to be massively popular. And the colours are amazing. Uh, so, yeah. Micron pens, they are waterproof, archival ink, so it won't fade, you won't go back to it in years and find your pages are blank. Um, yeah, all the Pigma ones are brilliant. Um, they also do brushes, uh, loads, massive range. Um, so if there's something I don't sell and you want them, um, oh, uh, yeah, we all have lots of volunteers for gophers for the stationery show. I, I did need to check my uh, bag into the... Um, cloakroom last year because I was carrying so many catalogues and things around. Uh, yes, uh, hand, hand paper clips. I sell paper clips. Uh, I'm not sure about specifically a hand paper clip, but uh, yeah, I've got all sorts of shapes. Arrows. Don't know if it works with the hand trick when they're rose gold. But yes, I do have lots of different colours of paper clips and things like that. But I'm always open to suggestions. I love buying stock, as you can tell if you were in here. Uh, so if there's things I don't have and you want, do say. So yeah, the Microns are fantastic. Also made by um, Sakura, it's a Japanese company. It's part of Royal Talons. So they also make the Ecolines. Oh, they're just off camera. I'll show you some in a minute. Um, and loads, loads of other pens. They're more of an art-based company rather than stationary strictly, but they're really expanding. And I saw something sneaky the other day when I was looking at the photo vault that I don't know if they're for sale yet or not, but I did see something with bullet journal written on it. I will let you know if I find out any more. Um, but yes, that, so they do all the gel, the jelly rolls, um, which we're probably familiar with. You'll see these all over the place. Archer and Olive loves them. 
as you'll see Bonnie using these all the time. This is one of the Moonlights and they've just brought out a whole new set of Moonlights with a much narrower tip uh, and they are fantastic on black, white and craft paper so you can use them across all sorts. Uh, there's 12 colours in the main set. Sorry, turning my back on you, that's not very polite. 12 colours in the main set and then there are one, two, three, four, five different sets with three in. So there's a Botanics one, there's the greys, there's a sort of galaxy one, a calm one, um, and one that's sort of autumnals. Um, they're all gorgeous, specifically as well if you're using craft. So um, the other, I'm jumping around all over, I'm sorry, I'm excited. The other sort of journal I wanted to tell you about that I stock is the Archer and Olive. This one's my personal journal, well thumbed. Um, but these are, if you, particularly if you're an um, art journaler, you like to use watercolours, paints, uh, paint pens, anything like that. In fact, there's some of my oopsie daisy stencils with watercolour and it doesn't go through the paper. Tiny little bit of curliness, but nothing major. So it's 160 GSM paper, white with little tiny sort of, I would say the more dark grey than a black dot. Um, and they are so thick and so beautiful and lovely to write in. But they do only have 160 pages in the main ones. They have released some now that have 192 pages. Um, but uh, it's because the paper's so thick. So if you had any more pages, you'd be carrying around a, an encyclopedia. Um, so if you love using markers and things, I would really recommend the Archer and Olives. Um, I've tested loads of different types of pen in them. None of them have gone through. Um, find something colourful to show you. There's my uh, birthdays doodah. Uh, I've tried brush pens, I've tried you know fine liners, um, something really really inky like an al alcohol based Tombows or something like that might go through the paper and you get a little bit of ghosting but other than that so they're quite I think that was my twin tones from Tombow so they're pretty bold um, and nothing on the other side that's my migraine tracker no colour has come through at all um, yes not having so many pages means you get to buy more and i just posted out an order to somebody who's bought four i hope she's going to share but if not i go for it <laughs> i'd like to have four on the go and um, so they've now brought out as well so she brought out last year the blackout books which is the same idea sharpies yeah because they're sort of alcohol based so they would go through um, she brought out last year the blackout books which are the same sort of idea but with black pages with little white dots um, and they've been really popular. They are fantastic with jelly rolls, with paint pens, with metallic paints. I absolutely adore these. I had to keep one for set for myself because they are so beautiful. But these are also from Royal Talons. They're from the Van Gogh range. Some of them don't look like much, but when you test them out, if you look back through my feed somewhere, um, you'll see what it looks like on black and white paper. And the colours are just incredible and they are so sparkly. They're beautiful. So they're really nice and black archer and olives. But yeah, she's just brought out, and I've just got first my first stock of them in, and I think I've sold them all. Um, craft paper. So a sort of you know like cardboard brown paper. And they look really popping with some of the, the moonlight jelly rolls in them. They're gorgeous. And you can use metallics on it as well that wouldn't show up on white. And I totally missed in the catalogue, so I didn't order, but will be next time. What they've called a Neapolitan like the ice cream so they've got some black pages some white pages some craft pages uh, so you can do a bit of all sorts in there my journaling is a bit more sporadic i'm not quite as organized as joe and you know making spreads every week and that sort of thing i kind of go at it for a bit and then don't and track certain things like migraines and some business related things in my journal so if you are a bit more like me and like just doing bits and pieces all over having different coloured paper where you can try things out I think works perfectly and um, so back to pens sorry went off on tangent and um, another thing by Secura that you might not have come across but is fantastic are these quickie glue pens and um, so they actually the, the, you know tip is very much like a, um, a moonlight like a jelly roll they're, they're very fine um, but it is glue and it comes out blue don't panic it dries clear and my friend Keely from KP Paper Cuts I don't know if she's with us today but um, she has started using these for her paper cuts and absolutely loves them because for tiny little bits of paper or little things that you want to stick in like tickets and things like that um, you can just draw on the back with a coloured pen stick it in you do need one Joe. you do need one Sarah I'll, I'm gonna order some more in because I've only got about 18 left I think so I'll be ordering some more um, but also I've seen them used for foiling um, which is really cool 
Um, uh, there's some great YouTube videos on that if you want to have a play around with foiling. Um, I've not had time to do it, but <laughs> I've watched it and I've loved it. So yeah, they're a pencil case essential, but not for huge things. Don't think like a big, you know, glue stick like when you're at school. These are more for delicate little bits and pieces, um, but they're really good. Uh, oh, and the last thing for my Royal Talon stuff is the Ecoline brush pens and the inks. Um, if you haven't tried these, I discovered these when I was at the stationery show. Totally fell in love. The fattest, juiciest brush pens you will ever see. And they are water-based, so you can blend them, you can merge them together. And also, where are my inks? This is my own personal stash down here. They do the inks in all the same colours they do the pens in. I've got them in five primaries and five additionals. Um, but what you can do is you can dip your pen in the ink, and then as you write, the colour changes. Um, you can create beautiful things. Millie from Blink Lettering did a video uh, last week, week before. Um, it'll be on her Instagram TV, and um, she, you know, showed you how you can blend and create backgrounds with them, use them for lettering. Not for beginners, I wouldn't say. Not for lettering beginners, anyway, um, because they are so fat and juicy. You want something smaller when you first start out and then when you get a bit more adventurous. But what you can do with these is create really cool like wreaths and things like that for your lettering um, by using the sort of the splodging, the, the tip splodging, not very technical, a bit like you would with a paintbrush. Um, oh, has Millie done another one this morning with the microns? I need to watch that. Um, but yes, so these work well with the microns, with these being water-based and the microns being waterproof, it means you can create sort of great blending effects and the microns won't blend into it, won't smudge. So that works really well as a, a pair. While we're talking about water-based pens and blending, um, the most iconic brush pen, I suppose, if you ask most people, is a Tombow jewel brush pen. And I've got these in quite a few colour packs, you can see it there. Uh, I also have some colours singul singularly. Uh, if I could fit them in, I'd have them all singularly. I think there's 72 colours, possibly. There's 60 of the equal lines and a blender pen, slightly more of the Tombows, and they've also brought these out in an alcohol version. These are also quite a big juicy pen, but not as juicy or as quite as fat as the Equilines, so these are sort of an intermediate one I would say, but they're also a jewel tip, so they've got a little bullet tip on the other end, hand. Um, so they are a great sort of intermediate pen, um, but I would say before you get up to those sort of ones, if you are doing some lettering, um, you maybe would, get, would start with something like the Tombow Fud, Fudensuki. I really apologise if there's anyone Japanese watching. That was the most horrific pronunciation. But they are a small brush pen, but flexible enough. Um, I've got those in packs of two. Ooh, I've got one left in packs of two with a hard and a soft tip. Um, and they, they're really nice to letter with when you first get going. Uh, they will be fine in most journals with thicker paper, thicker paper. probably not something like a, a Rodeo or a Leuchter because um, you'd get um, shadowing through to the other side, but they shouldn't leak through. Um, and very similar to that, one of my new favourites is the Pentel Touch. And Millie from Blink Lettering also introduced me to these when she did her um, partnership with Pentel. And they're a very similar size tip. Um, lovely and flexible but not too flexible so this is what I would say to start with if you're brand new to brush lettering in particular uh, and they come in 24 colours now and um, I've got packs of 12 I've just moved them over here and then the new 12s are now available to order as a pack but I've got them individually so there's like beautiful pale baby pink and a blue baby blue but then also they've got sort of a really bright spring green and this one's called burgundy. It doesn't look anything like my school uniform, which was burgundy. I think it's more of a, a deep pink. Um, but they're, that's a gorgeous colour. So you can order those from me individually or as packs of 12s. Um, and they probably will bring out a pack of 24, but it'd be quite pricey. But they're worth it. They're lovely. Um, right. Oh, right. You'll all have heard of mild liners, probably. Japanese budget version. Um, they have a highlighter on one end and a little bullet tip on the other end. But they've now also brought out a brush pen. So you can still use it for highlighting, but you can also use it as a brush pen. Um, and they're famous for their milder inks. So whereas these have really strong, bold colours, and they do come in pastels as well, 
these are just a bit more gentle so even with the fluorescent um, it's just a softer mild colour hence the name mild liners uh, so they are some of my best sellers I'll go through those quite quickly um, Zebra manufacture them they're a Japanese brand um, but I get them from the UK distributors so they're the official ones don't be caught out with milk liners which I've seen on uh, various websites which are sort of fake mild liners they're just not as good um, and you never know quite what has gone into them which worries me a little bit about fake pens um, but we all get caught out from time to time if you like the twin tip thing Tombow also do twin tones I've got three different sets of these I've got um, pastel bright and rainbow and they've got a very fine tip on one end and a sort of like a felt tip end on the other end they're really good in journals because they come in packs of 12 and you've got a fat end and a thin end so you've got 24 pens to play with essentially so if you're a colour coder someone said they were a pen colour coder um, you know they're brilliant for like I used it for the months of the year for birthdays and things like that um, so I love those for that uh, and then Joe and I discovered these at the stationery show chameleon so these are colour changing fine liners they do do fat pens for um, some more sort of arty based things but these are the ones I would say would be great to use in a journal or for lettering projects um, and what you do with them um, they come in packs of 6, 12, 24 or 48 I bought a 24 when they were, they are, they're so much fun. I bought a 24 when they were um, Kickstarter, when they first came out, and which was shortly after the stationery show. I think we were some of the first people in the country to try them, or possibly first people in the world, don't know. But we had great fun. And all you do, the lids, you can't see, have got ink inside the lid as well. So when you first get them, they recommend storing them upside down for a bit, so the ink goes into the, to, to, into the lid. Uh, and every so often you can do that to sort of refill it. And then all you have to do is swap the lids over and put a different lid on and you push it down until it clicks um, and they are I know very exclusive it, we were very special at the stationery show um, and so that yeah the, you, you then I, will, I, I did a little demo before because I was a bit worried about doing it live in case I messed it up somehow um, can you see that so I've got pink going into green green going back into pink and then purple into green and as you write it gradually changes colour uh, Joe, I think you nearly managed to get a full seven colour rainbow didn't you when we we're at the stationery show uh, I found it got a little bit muddy around the yellows but uh, you can layer the colours on top of each other and these when I've done a live events where I'm sort of face to face with customers which I don't do that often um, but everybody loves them from the grandparents right down to the young children um, my son's colour blind and he still loves playing around with them so although he can't you know see exactly what's going on um, he loves the difference oh yeah oh hello Auntie Helen everybody's here today it's fab um, so they are absolutely brilliant to play around with and they've got a lovely fine tip um let's see mm. so you could have an infinite number of colors to use in your journal and the ink the ink lasts ages you can leave the caps off for quite a while the only thing to be careful of is when you pack them away make sure you put the right colored lid on the right colored pen but they've got nicely colored ends so it's nice and easy um and try and make sure you write keep writing until the color goes back to its original color when you're finished with it um but i've got packs oh i haven't got many left i've got packs of six in the floral which is like the pinks and I've got a rainbow pack of six and then I've got 12s in the primary colours and the designer colours. I did have the cools but they sold out really quickly so I need to get some more of those in. But they're, yeah, they're really good. Um, okay, what else was I going to tell you about? Ah, right. So talking about more general writing. If you're a long form journaler, if you like to write, if you're a creative writer, more sort of regular writing pens rather than specifically for journaling or lettering. So you want something that's comfy to coat hold if you like um nice colors something cheap and cheerful and um, these are also from zebra they're the clip pens but these come in hundreds of colors hundreds might be exaggerating loads of colors uh, but these are the milky ones and i didn't see these around very much that's why i chose to stock the milky ones i've got them in purple red blue green turquoise orange pink white uh, and they're really nice to write with so you could use those on colored paper or just on regular paper um, and they're really sort of cheap and cheerful and fun and zebra also do some nice and um, the Z grip that's just like a, a regular like a biro equivalent ballpoint pen 
um, but it's got a nice grip, but they're, I can't remember, 89p or something like that, they're, they're cheap and cheerful, um, but a bit nicer um, than, you know, the sort of thing you'd had at school. Um, but if you're something a little bit snazzier, these have been amazing. I stocked these from the beginning of Under the Rowan Trees. And if you are a glittery girl, or boy, you can spend literally hours just watching the glitter. And I've got these in, ooh, I lost track at about 40 different colours, I think. By the time you swap the different metal and the different glitter and things. But they write really nicely, really smoothly, and they've got a nice weight to them. And they're refillable. Uh, I've got black and blue refills, so uh, they're £3, um, but they make really nice gifts. I send lots of those as gifts. So if you're fancying something a little bit different, and then if you're fancying something even posher than that, have you come across Coeco, German company, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong as well, cutest pens. So I got to make this myself using the press and put the things in. So they specialise in fountain pens, but they're not all fountain pens. So this one is, this one's mine. How cute is that? Um, oh, sorry. Do I do refills? I do refills. Um, so they've got the nibs coming from extra fine through to bold. Is the one bigger than bold? I can't remember. But fine and medium are the most popular. So that's what I tend to stock. Um, and they come they can either use them with ink i sell little piston converters or you can use them with cartridges uh, which come in lots of colors so i've just sent some off to be photographed um but there's there's grays light blue orange purple green red three different blues black and a highlighter yellow which is really good fun so if you want to write something that's going to really stand out get highlighter yellow ink they do bottled ink as well i don't have them in yet but the, you know it's something i would be happy to stock all the cartridges but as well as um, the fountain pens, they do roller balls or ball points. Yeah, I have the clips um, just in the um, stainless steel, I think they're called these ones. Uh, I can get them in in the other colours if you particularly want them. But yeah, I've got them. I've got a big bag of them. Um, but this is a ball point, which is the same idea. The lid comes off and then makes it the full size. Mum, you need a refill for your glittery pen. I will send you one. It's nearly your birthday. There you go. 50p present. I'm joking, I will send her more than a 50p present. So yeah, that's the rollerball pen, but they're perfect for handbag pens because they're so compact, um, but then when you put the lid on, they become a full-size pen. Uh, and they're, they've got an octagonal barrel, so they don't roll off. So if you do your journaling on a train, they're really good. Um, and the, the, I think the fill, refills for those just come in um, blue and black. Uh, but what they also do that I love is they do two different types, actually, of pencils. And I really like, for getting a really sharp line, a mechanical pencil, if you can see. Uh, and I sell refills for these as well. Um, and I ran out doodling when you're in the hole to BT. That says it all. That's why I don't phone BT. Um, but yes, so I've got this, these pencils and then there's one with like a fatter refill that you can sharpen to a point. Um, so they're really good for, um, fat, fatter lead I should say, rather than a refill. Really good for um, sketching, drawing with. Joe, I don't have a clock in here, so if I'm rambling for too long, do tell me to shut up. I, that's one thing on my wish list. It's not two months till my birthday. Can I have a clock, please? Um, right, so that's Coeco. These are the Skyline Sport range. Uh, I also sell the frosted range where you can see through into the middle, into the inside, so you can see the workings, which are really popular. Um, and I get the odd ones in of other ranges that they do so many different ones, I can't afford to stock them all. But if you want them in particular, let me know and I can source it for you. Um, right, I think that's all the regular pens. So I showed you my Archer and Olive journal earlier. Oh, it's only one. Th How did I manage 35 minutes of rambling? I thought I'd be getting stuck after five minutes. Sorry. Um, so I stock the Archer and Olive dot grid notebooks. I will soon be stock, stock, stocking the Leuch, Leuch, term, the German ones. Um, but I also stock at the moment the hardback Rodia Gold books, and I will be getting some softback ones in soon. Um, Rodia paper is just absolutely gorgeous, especially if you use a fountain pen. It's got a special smooth coating. I don't know how that feel, but it is amazingly smooth. It's nowhere near as thick as something like Archer and Olive. It is, what was the thickness? Kept a bit of paper to remind myself. Ooh, 
Och det som här slissan. Should I keep going? Your comments are coming through fine. What did you miss? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm rumbling away talking to myself. Can you hear me now? I'm just checking my signal. I've got a good Wi-Fi signal. You hear me? Or am I talking to myself again? Oh, I'm so sorry, everybody. It's been really stable recently. Shall I keep going? What do you think, Joe? <laughs> Don't phone BT again. <laughs> Not till I've sent you a refill anyway. <laughs> oh, is it okay now? Oh, good. It might have just been too many people on the internet. Sorry. What was the last thing you heard? Rodeo books. So this is a Rodeo Gold book. Um, they do hard back and soft back. I'm talking about rodeo paper. <gasps> oh, it's so soft. Um, it's beautiful for fountain pens, beautiful coating. Um, gremlins in the Wi-Fi. We'll get it all the time in this village. It's usually Sundays. <laughs> Sorry, I will try and go back over it. Sorry if you heard some of this and I'm repeating myself. So the paper is 90 GSM. So it's a lot thicker. It's a lot thinner, sorry, than something like the Archer and Olive. But it's such lovely quality. It's beautiful to write on. Uh, it comes in ivory or white. Um, I've got ivory initially, but I can get the white ones next time as well. Um, comes in loads of colours. I just stocked my favourites to start with. Um, I bought black, thinking it was nice and neutral, and I've been left with those. So I'm going to stick with getting the pinks, the purples, the oranges, the blues. Yes, I can see your comments. Yeah, I could see those coming through all the time. I was talking to you even when you couldn't hear me. <laughs> Um, so, it, yeah, what I love about these as gold books is it's got a contents page and it's got a perpetual calendar. So it's got all the months and all the numbers. So you can use that for birthdays or appointments. Oh, you're all talking to me now. That's good. I should have noticed you'd stop talking to me. I thought I was just boring you to death. And then it's got a sort of monthly summary for each month. Um, and then what else? numbered dot grid pages um, and a blank page for notes so it's a bit sort of in between a completely blank notebook and a diary so if you're a bit scared of dumping the diary completely that's a nice alternative so it's sort of in between 
Uh, Leuchtturm do something similar, which I'm planning to stock, which is part diary, part notebook, um, which again is very similar paper quality to the Rodia. Um, I think they're 80 GSM. Um, but you know, it, it, so it depends what you want to use your journal or your notebook for, whether you prefer lines, squares, dots. And what I think I really want to get across is that it's whatever you want it to be. You know, if you love a dotted notebook, buy a dotted notebook. If you want lines, buy lines. You know, your journal needs to work for you, whether it's a journal or whether it's a notebook. You know, if you just want to make notes, then that's absolutely great. Um, and choose your notebook based on what sort of pens you're going to use. You don't need to invest a huge amount in something like an Archer and Olive, really lovely thick paper, if you're just going to use pencil. Um, whereas if you are going to use paints in there, um, or marker pens, uh, highlighters lots, then maybe you want a thicker paper. So, you know, really choose based on that. Um, and chat to somebody who, you know, like me or Joe or people who've used lots of different types and get, you know, a bit of feedback on what works well. Um, especially if you're just starting out, you know, don't feel pressure to buy a really expensive notebook. But once you start to take pleasure in it, you'll see the pleasure of the beautiful paper. And that's when people do want to invest in something that they enjoy using. And if it's lovely and you enjoy it, then you're going to use it a lot more. Um, so that's, I think, the main thing when it comes to notebooks. Uh, Rodia, I kind of got familiar with when I first started lettering. Um, and I did a course with two wonderful local ladies who were known as the Craft Hood. Um, unfortunately, they've recently closed their business, which is sad, but their workshops were fantastic. So I did both brush lettering and dip pen lettering calligraphy with them. And that's where I still got started. Uh, I'm still very much learning. Um, yes, a beginner's journaling person. I can point you to um, uh, Stationery Magpie, who runs journaling workshops. You just missed one this morning, but she will be doing some more later in the month. Um, I'll see if I'm persuaded to write as a guest blog post as well. Uh, if you really want to go for bullet journaling full on, you can buy Ryder Carroll's book. He was the inventor of bullet journaling, but that's a whole other thing. We can talk about that another time. Um, but I'm hoping to stock those soon when I can get hold of some. But yeah, Rodia paper. Rodia do these pads. This is the A5. They do it in A4. They do lots of other sizes as well. They do them dots, lines, um, squares, um, pretty much anything you can imagine. But with their beautifully smooth paper um, and it's just a nice that's this is just the dot grid one um, but these are amazing for lettering for sketching and um, if you are gonna buy nice pens the really big thing that's really important is good paper and um, because if you're using something like Tombow's eco lines with the soft flexible nibs if you use rough pa printer paper and um, you're just gonna damage them so your pens aren't gonna last so long so some people say, oh, I bought one of those. It didn't last very long. It was rubbish. It's not the pen. It's the paper. Um, I can make some recommendations of paper that comes in big packs um, if you want just plain paper to practice on. But if you want a pad, I would say Rodia definitely. Lovely smooth pages. Um, and you can just go through loads of them. You know, it's not that expensive. You get loads of pages in a pad. Uh, I use an A4 one. Um, this is full of sort of lettering drills and things I've done with trying out all sorts of different pens and um, and you know it's just perfect for it and it's really nice actually with the pads to flip back through and see your progress and um, so to see how much uh, you've improved you're all still there you've stopped talking to me just hope I haven't paused again oh somebody just joined but can you all hear me or am I talking to myself again have a quick pause for breath oh good I've got a wave hopefully that means you can still see me so we talked about rhodia pads talked about gold bo books talked about microns oh how cute are these these are energels from pentel and lovely flowery pens and look they come in like a, a picnic camper box I just get so tempted by funky cute things so I got uh, a bit overexcited and stocked some of these but it seems you love them as well but um mum and auntie Helen how much does this one remind you of wallpaper in Lincoln at granddad's house couldn't stop thinking of that but I, I love them they're really cool there's sort of liberty style um oh you're all listening intently I'm glad I'm not boring you to sleep 
um, they're yeah vintage Liberty style um, patterns, but they're really nice to write with inner gels, lovely and smooth. Um, they're an 07, but those sort of, you know mid thickness, so they're nice to write with. Right. So the question I get asked the most um, is, um, oh, is that laughing at the wallpaper? I have to have pens that remind me of the wallpaper. Uh, the question I ask most is, what do I need if I want to get started with calligraphy? And the first thing I have to ask is sort of, what do you mean by calligraphy? What do you have in mind? And I think everybody has a different idea of what they're actually asking me. So I need to know what sort of style you're thinking, whether you want really traditional italic type calligraphy or whether you want um, the more sort of modern bouncy brush lettering with a brush pen or with a brush. So there are loads of options and I was hoping to launch today a new product, but it's not quite ready. So I'm saving it till it's ready, but this is a little sort of sneak preview of what's going to be coming soon. And I will share a discount code for you guys to say thank you for listening to me blather on for ages. Um, but the, there's so much to lettering and really, again, a bit like journaling, it's finding what you enjoy and what works for you. And when I started, the first class I did was proper brush lettering with a brush and a pot of ink in fact i've got my original uh, craft hood little pot of ink that i keep refilling um, and that's india ink um, which is it does have water base to it so you can water it down um, or you can you know let it dry and make it a bit thicker um, but that is a really good style don't try and put it in your fountain pen you'll ruin your fountain pen but that is to be used with a brush or with a dip pen and nib and if you're not sure what I'm talking about by a dip pen, it's going to be something like this. So this is a really simple, uh, yes, I'll come to that, cat, uh, Catwoman Tiger in a second, I'll answer that. Um, so this is a really simple dip pen. These are really cheap and cheerful. They've just got an end like that, usually made of wood or plastic. And then you put a nib, so a pen nib, like the end of a fountain pen. Ooh, try to do the hand trick in the end not so easy while you're, you're watching like that and then you literally dip it in the ink and write with it so that is what i mean by a dip pen this is what they call a straight pen straight dip pen and this is what they call an oblique dip pen so the nib for this one and this nib i wanted to show you just because i love the name is a blue pumpkin so it's slightly blue in colour and slightly pumpkin-like in shape. It does have a much more official name. It's a Browse number 361. Nowhere near as exciting as blue pumpkin. But that goes in. This bit is called a flange. Such a funny word. Um, and the nib, we might need a bit of tweaking. Not quite the right shape. You can tweak them if you need to. But that, that go, the nib goes into the flange. It would push in a bit further than that. And that is what's called an oblique pen holder and that's a slightly different angle. Um, I know lots of people ask for tips for left-handers. I'm not left-handed, but if you read Simply Lettering magazine, yes, I can. If you read Simply Lettering magazine, there are um, loads of really good um, tips. They have a column for lefties in there with some good tips. Um, so an oblique like this probably wouldn't work for a lefty, but you could flip it around and turn the flange over and do it the other way around. Um, or you can use a straight pen. But what I also sell, which are massively popular at the moment, I've had to order some more. These are made in Australia and it's called a Moblique. You can see that light shining on a little bit. But they're absolutely beautiful. These work both as an oblique and as a straight pen holder. So you can take the flange out and put your nib straight in the end. But they also untwist and you can keep your nibs inside so you don't lose your nibs which is just brilliant. So if you want to try with a dip pen, I would say either get a straight or an oblique or get one of these, which does both. So you can try both and see which, which you prefer. And also the shape of it is nice to hold. So I would say these are great for beginners as well as more advanced people. Don't be put off by the shape and stuff. It's just what you put your nib in the end of. So it doesn't really matter too much. Um, start off with an, just plain black ink. Indian ink is cheaper. And then when you're feeling a bit more adventurous, I sell quite a few others and there's more coming. Um, but the ones I sell that are more popular that you'd like to know of are Windsor and Newton. They've got lovely glass bottles with little pictures on. It's the violet. And Herbin, 
um, which are made in Paris and have been for a very long time. Uh, so all the names are in French, which was a bit of a challenge, but I have put swatches on the website so you can see. Um, so there, when you're feeling a bit more adventurous and want to try more colours, you can also use watercolours with a dip pen. Or you can use any of these inks with a brush and do brush lettering with a brush and ink. Um, so those of you who are asking for tips, slow down, go right back to basics. It's a bit like teaching yourself something like riding a bike or knitting. It's muscle memory. Um, Stationary Magpie is doing a, I can't remember when, Joe might tell us, doing an introduction to sort of lettering tutorial over this weekend. But also there's loads of fantastic people to follow. I mentioned blink lettering earlier, Millie. Um, she does brush lettering and she favours something like the, um, where is it, the Pentel brush pen. She does some fantastic tutorials and workbooks and challenges and hopefully I'm working with her to write one for, for my customers. So that's going to be one of my, part of my new products is um, lettering boxes for dip pens, brush pens or both. And I've worked with Sarah from Inkspire to write a dip pen tutorial and some practice sheets. And hopefully Millie is going to do the brush pen ones for me. Um, and basically go right back to the beginning, whether you're using a brush pen or a dip pen, take it really slowly. And a tip Millie uses, which I think is great, is to use different coloured pens for different parts of the letter. So you've got to literally put it down and stop. Um, make sure you've got space around you. Basic beginners lettering at 11am tomorrow. Brilliant. So have a look at that. It's going to give you some tips to start you off. So I don't want to step on her toes too much, but I would say really slow down, really go back to basic um, drills. So if you haven't heard of drills, it's a bit like being in the army, star jumps or whatever, but these are just basic shapes. So start with very fine um, upstrokes, very fat downstrokes with the curves and just keep doing those, build up the, the, the muscle memory. So whether you do it every day, if you can, a couple of times a week, every week, but the more you do it, the much more, the much easier you'll find it. You'll build up the strength in your hand. You'll build up the muscle memory so that you can almost do it without thinking. Um, and then when you come back to it, when you haven't done it for a while, whoops, um, a bit like riding a bike, you'll find it comes back really quickly because you've built up that muscle memory. So slow down, take your time. It's meant to be mindful and relaxing. If you're finding it stressful, stop, come back to it another time. You know, you need to be nice and calm and quiet. First thing in the morning with a cup of tea or, you know, a nice lazy afternoon. Um, and don't put pressure on yourself. Don't decide you want to write your wedding invitations tomorrow. You're going to learn. You know, it's meant to be enjoyable. So take your time and think about the style you want to achieve. You know, you don't have to look exactly like anybody else. So um, the idea of the sheets that are being produced for me is they're really good for beginners. So they're going to have some drills and then they're going to have some basic alphabets, um, which you can copy and you can work on. I've got books. Um, I, I sell some books. Uh, Rebecca Carhill Roots does another fantastic one that I don't stock yet. Kirsten Burke does some great ones. Uh, there's loads of people out there. There's loads of stuff on YouTube as well that you can watch. Um, yeah, just, you know, take it slowly. Don't push yourself don't put stress on yourself the uh, simply lettering magazines come with um, practice sheets you can use uh, they're not always the most beautifully smooth paper so sometimes you could put tracing paper over the top if you wanted to reuse them uh, or navigator paper is the one I use that's just like a printer paper I think I bought my pack on eBay I think they sell it in um, Wilco's as well but that's really nice for a lovely smooth paper that you can practice the drills on and then when you're ready with the drills um, and you're feeling a bit more confident, then you can move on to starting to form letters. But really take your time. You know, don't go from um, never having touched it before to expecting to be able to do the whole alphabet in a week. You know, it's a, it's a, a skill. It's, you know, a craft that you need to learn and take time over and enjoy. So don't put pressure on yourself. So if you want to start, I would say try a dip pen, try a brush, try a brush pen try out some different styles, have a little play around. The actual forming of the letters is quite similar um, across the different styles of lettering. Um, and you know, find what works for you and what you enjoy. But definitely starting with a smaller brush pen, if you're going for a pen. Um, and if you're going for a nib, a G nib is a, just a general purpose nib. I sell two different ones. I sell a, a zebra one and I sell um, a manuscript um, le le Leonard. I need to learn how to say all these things. 
pears, which are made in the UK. Um, and the idea is they've, they've got quite a bit of flexibility, so you can get very fine lines and really thick lines, um, but they're not so flexible that you're going to end up flicking all over the place. So take your time and enjoy it. Um, somebody was saying about getting it in the advent calendar. Um, yeah, have a look at, um, you know, find some YouTube videos. I'll share some examples within my Facebook group, and I'm sure Joe can share th some things for you as well. Um, Joe's latest box, the uh, Oops a Daisy quarterly box, um, was lettering themed. I don't know if she's got any spares left, but mine came yesterday, and it's fab. Um, she's done. Oh, I don't want to spoil the surprise. But some great tools that will help you with your lettering and thinking about your composition and your shapes. Uh, and I think uh, Stationery Magpie is going to be launching a little lettering challenge that we can join in with. But again, don't worry about amazing style. And also don't worry if your handwriting's not great. That was my fear at the beginning, that my handwriting's a bit blah, you know. But it's a totally different thing. It's thinking about putting the different shapes together. You know, a bit like putting, you know, physical movements together to form, I don't know, a dance or a gymnastics thing or whatever. <gasps> Completely sold out. Fantastic. Well done. So maybe lettering is another theme to uh, to come back to. Um, but, uh, it, you know, I think especially in lockdown, so many people have turned to... to painting to lettering to macrame to knitting you know i've got my macrame plant hanger that i made up here i've got a few um you know these things are stuff that just makes us stop and slow down and just think about you know spending our time not doing anything um sorry too much information i will put slow it down and make it into a blog post yeah because i know it's hard to take loads of stuff in from a video so i will write you some blog posts I'll add it to my list of things to work on. Um, and, you know, I'm not much further on than a beginner. I'm very much sort of playing around with my lettering um, and my journaling. And, you know, unless you're going to do it as a career, you know, that's a lovely place for us all to be, to be experimenting and enjoying and, uh, you know, having a good time with it. And that's what, I, you know, I want you to do with your stationery. I want you to enjoy it and take pleasure in it. How are we doing for time, Joe? Does anyone have any other questions? Anything else you would like to know about? I think I've shown you my paints, my inks, my plant. Um, I've got loads of other things. If there's anything in specific you would like to see. Oh, it's, the let is definitely worth waiting for, the lettering box. I only had a really quick look yesterday when I finished packing orders. I need to have a proper play with it. Maybe tomorrow I'll have a chance to have a proper play. Is there anything in particular you would like me to show you, or explain, or demonstrate? Two minutes? Wow, I can't believe I've talked for a whole hour. So if there's any final questions, anything you'd like to know about? You want all the pens. <laughs> it's a shame you can't pop up and visit. We also live very far away, in the Cornish Geek even further away. I'm in Northumberland, on the edge of Newcastle. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm a long way away from my stationary friends, but luckily through the world of Instagram, we can uh, chat whenever we want to, which is fab. Um, and I think Joe and I are very similar in that we um, want to build a real community of the stationary addicts around us. Um, oh, you're very welcome to come and spend all day browsing, if you're allowed. Uh, stopping ghosting, do you mean so coming through the paper? It's really going to depend on the type of paper and the type of pen. Um, if it's when you're using ink, you know, dip pen ink or a brush and ink, um, maybe try putting a bit less on, so you know it's a little drier. Um, but I think really it's going to be a case of choosing the right um, the right paper. We're in Northumberland, so I am mm, the nearest place you probably recognise the name of is Corbridge. So I'm sort of halfway between the Metro Centre on the A1 and Hexham. Um, so we're literally only about a mile and a half into Northumberland, outside of Newcastle, but we're in the beautiful countryside, Tyne Valley. Uh, which brush pen, um, for a beginner, I would say the Pentel, these ones, Pentel Sign Touch Pens, or the, you're going to make me say it again, Tombow Fudensuki. Uh, these have got a very sort of soft, flexible nib, um, but not too flexible. Um, there, I've, there is a blog post about that on my website and there's a grid with how many colours they come in and things. Um, so I highly recommend those. If you've got questions, just message me. Um, I am known to be a bit too close to my pen. Oh, Corbridge is lovely, yes, and Anik. Love Anik. Um, I'm known to be a bit 
too on my phone a bit too much so I'm trying to sort of step back a bit and so if you do get my auto responder I'm probably still there but I'm trying not to spend all evening on messenger and spend some time with my husband and my son but I will get back to you as soon as I can um oh I used to live in North Shields as well my husband is from North Shields that's where he grew up um so uh yeah if you've got questions pop into the group as well because there's be loads of people within my stationary addicts facebook group um who can help and can answer questions um i've just admitted a new admin my friend keely from kp paper cuts she's going to spend some time within the group helping out and answering questions if that's something anyone else is interested in doing you know any of my customers who want to help and spread the stationary love a bit do get in touch and we can have a chat about it uh, I'm really pleased that you've enjoyed it and that you found it interesting. And I didn't realise I had so much to say about pens. It seems I do. Uh, right, I will let you get on with your afternoon. I think I need a cup of tea and a sit in the garden. Maybe a little bit of knitting. Um, and thank you so much for all of you joining in. I am really from Yorkshire though. I am. <laughs> Mum's just making sure you know that. East Yorkshire. I posted a parcel to North Humberside yesterday. I didn't think Humberside existed anymore. Is Google in North Humberside? I thought it was West Yorkshire. Don't know. Right, thank you so much. It's been lovely to talk to you all. Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you, Auntie Helen and Mum. Thank you for joining in and anyone else who I've not seen pop up. Um, I'm going to try and save this to IGTV. Hopefully I can get it right and then it doesn't disappear. Um, and thank you very much for joining me. And I'd love to talk to you soon. Lovely to meet you too, Catwoman Tiger. <laughs> Bye.